Hi. Hey. We have exciting things to talk about. We can't wait to tell you. We We, have a live show. Oh my God. We're going to be together. We're going to have a live show. It's a digital experience via Moment House. It's on July 21st at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be together. The theme is TGOG Summer Camp. So we're getting a little spooky. Spooky. Grab your summer bags. Your s'mores. Um, I don't know, your favorite horror movies that take place at camps and sleepaway camp and um, get ready to be terrified because we are going to tell amazing spooky stories about the outdoors and camping and put us all in the mood and be terrified to go outside all summer because that's what we do here. Perfectly in sync with what we do. (laughs) Exactly. There's going to be exclusive merch that you can purchase. There's going to be meet and greets. And just generally an awesome time. So we cannot wait. And we cannot wait for you you to be there there. with us. Yes. We will see you there. Oh. Oh. Hi, Lay. That's a (laughs) kitty booty in the screen. Get your tickets now on our website or on momenthouse.com. And we'll see you there. Welcome. Welcome. This is Two Girls, One Ghost. Two Girls, One Ghost. And we are your ghostesses. That is Corinne. And I I am Sabrina. And I'm wearing my mother's overalls from back in the day. Oh, Sabrina. I wish you told me. I have my mom's overalls from back in the day. (gasps) We could have been matching. We could have been. I think it's like... I don't even... I think they're like Oshkosh Bagosh or something like that. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. These are old navy. I mean, they look great. I like the color. The wash is awesome. People who are watching our YouTube will get to actually see. And you're wearing is that a wit is that your Whitney Houston shirt underneath it? This is my Romeo's pizza shirt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, a little different. I like that you now know my wardrobe. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, it's it's actually that's a challenge. It's hard to know your wardrobe because you rent a lot of clothes, so you yes. always have new clothes. That's but true. then there are a few things that you wear often. Mm-hmm. So, was that a Harry Styles coffee mug? Oh, of course it is. <laughs> Weren't you gonna <laughs> see Justin Bieber <laughs> recently? I was supposed to see Justin Bieber yesterday in Boston, but he He's, is not well right now, yeah. so it is postponed, which is totally fine. I was so not sending- upset about it because I was like. He's got other things to think about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we're sending our good vibes to Justin Bieber. Good vibes. Feel better. Yes. Good vibes to him. Good vibes and to everybody. You know what? Because Justin all Bieber, of you guys are are haunted, so you need good vibes. You and do. we're about to tell you about it because this is an Encounters episode. It sure is. I was going to say Justin Bieber should listen to our podcast and it will make him feel better. So oh, putting I that out so. in the universe as well. We totally um, should. We'll DM Haley and be like, Haley, I think that you guys as a couple should listen to our podcast together. <laughs> yeah. That'll be our I new marketing. Good bonding. Good bonding. Yeah. Good bonding. Um, I think I'm first, right? Okay, great. I don't remember, but I think that's a great idea. All right. I'm gonna I've this episode I picked out one that's really long, and then I picked out a couple that are like really short. So we're gonna okay. get a whole a whole mesh of them but I'm going to start out with one that's pretty short but I still think it's like oh my god okay just a few sentences and already I'm like holy shit this is so scary okay okay this is from Sarah hello girlies my name is Sarah and I absolutely love your podcast and listen religiously I work night shift which can be kind of spooky but it makes the night fly by so much quicker anyways I live in the Appalachian Mountains in the middle (gasps) of nowhere there's thick layers of trees surrounding my house in almost every direction because i work night shifts i'm always awake on my days off so i was folding clothes with my little dog toby and i hear what sounds like footsteps coming up the ramp to my porch everything gets quiet 
And then I hear almost a robot toned woman's voice say, help, help, help outside of my window. There was no emotion, no tapping or pecking on the window. And at this point, my dog is going absolutely insane. My parents wake up and ask what's wrong. And I explain to them and they just laughed at me. So now here I am sitting in my living room at 4.56 a.m. sending you this email. Thank you for keeping me occupied at work and doing an amazing job. See you on the other side. Sarah. <laughs> what? What? Uh, ah. This sounds like she wrote Skinwalker Encounter? Question mark. And or I mean, like Black Eyed Kids or that's any yeah. kind of mimic or yeah. There's so – and in the Appalachian Mountains, Ugh. there's so much going on. So like, I mean, we've read – I think our first episode that we ever did, not necessarily about the Appalachian Mountains, but just about like the woods and trails was called Hiking Buddies. It's like number nine or something. We did it so early. And I feel like even stories from there and from all of the like deep Reddit threads we've gone through prove that in the Appalachian Trail, there's even spirits that are so incredibly powerful that like it could have just straight up been a ghost doing this as well. That's true. Remember when you wanted to go hike the Appalachian Trail by yourself? Yes. And there was, I was a really, really strong pull for like months. Yeah. And I, I wanted to do it alone, the whole thing. And I don't camp. Like a bug <laughs> lands on me and I scream. But for some reason, I was really getting pulled to the mountains. So glad I didn't go. <laughs> me too. I don't know if you'd be with us today. I mean, I would have had to survived. live stream the whole thing, I think, yeah. to be safe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is really unsettling. I mean, wherever you are, if you hear that, it's unsettling. But to be in the middle of the Appalachian Trail or mountains is even worse because it's like I'm picturing that there's no one around for miles and miles and miles. So it could be someone who's trying to harm you. It could be it, something supernatural. Like right. it reminds me of – um. Is it strangers? And it's based on a true story where these the people with the masks, they like oh. showed up to a house and just because they were home, they killed them. Yeah. The last scene was, why? Why are you doing this? And they said, because you were home. Ugh. It, this does feel like that. And it's so creepy because it's like, what are the chances that someone's going to be awake at that time? I was thinking about it the other yeah. day. I actually think that like 4 a.m., to 6 a.m. is some of the scariest time of day mm. and night because 3 a.m. paranormally, very scary. Yeah. But for human on human interaction, I think it's like those are the two hours that where you're least likely to run into someone awake. Like the bars yeah. spill out until 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. But then true. it's like dead for two hours until the 6 a.m. commute starts again. Yeah. It's funny because I feel like I like those hours because okay twilight backing up it's pretty peaceful yeah if you're in your own home and you're safe yeah or if you're you know yes if you're in a like i would love to sit on the beach like early early morning like at Mm. 5 a.m in the quiet i've never done this by the way so i don't know if i actually would like it (laughs) (laughs) maybe in my mind i would like it (laughs) But you just would. sit there and no one's up, no one's awake. And it's just kind of like you have the world to yourself for a moment. I really like that idea. There's such a short – I mean, I guess I'm thinking where I'm based in New England. There's such a short window of time where you could actually do that because the sun doesn't yeah. rise until like basically 6 a.m., 5.30. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I think there there is something peaceful and tranquil about it. But I think – being in the middle of the woods or <laughs> yeah, that's like different. walking out on the street by yourself, my alarm yeah. bells would be r- ringing like, like looking crazy. around, head on a yeah. swivel. What's, where am I? Who's around? <sighs> What's going on? Well, I mean, <sighs> Sarah, you got to give us updates if anything else happens. Yeah, what this the was, heck? Wait, this was set in November of 2021. So there's been, been half a year a has passed. Yeah. Okay, we'll follow up. Yeah. We'll follow up. Okay, I have a story from our listener, Danielle, and it's called, My Dad Accidentally Adopted a Ghost Child. (gasps) Hello, ladies. 
Happy um, Father's Day. This is basically <laughs> like we're a little late at this point, two weeks late, yeah. but this feels like we should have read this for that. We're recording it right after Father's Day, so I guess yeah. it's it's still Father's Day. Um, okay. I'll do my best to try and make this make sense. I am not the best at telling stories. But I lived in a house that was haunted by three different spirits. One was the hat man, the other was the slender shadow, and the other one was a little boy who gave me very mixed vibes. The boy was very mischievous and liked to make, oh gosh, my little sister cry at night because she said, he'll never leave me alone. So of course, my dad would come to our room to calm her down and say out loud to the boy, it's time you leave her alone. Yeah. There were mornings when my dad would go to work and my stepmom would say that once he left, the boy would appear at the end of her bed and scare her. No! That went on for years until my dad and stepmom split. She took the kids and it was just me and my dad in that house after that. It was a bad year after the split, and of course, spirits feed off of negative vibes that you put out, and man, oh man, was there a lot of negativity in that house. Yikes. Not only did the two evil spirits get stronger, but the boy did too. He appeared in a dream of mine in quotes. He hit my head while I was trying to nap, and he liked to hit things off the counter. Well, my dad was a drunk and liked to talk to the boy, saying things a parent would say to a child when they misbehave, like, leave Rosie alone, she's not doing anything to you, or stop throwing that and behave. And This is also frustrating me because this isn't just like a normal child ghost who's kind of playing or or, or figuring out what they can do. This feels like the annoying kid that you Mm -hmm. you, like had to hang out with that you're like, oh my God, (laughs) like... Do you not have any parenting? Just fucking stop slapping me. Yeah. Or like, leave me alone. Yeah. I'm getting annoyed for her (laughs) on her behalf. Because that's It really is kind of like a sibling. Yeah. Um, The creepiest thing about it is that he would listen to my dad when he asked him to stop. Well, when we went our separate ways after a year of living there alone, leaving the house behind, I thought we left him behind. Behind too, but I just found out this Easter after bringing up the old hauntings we all experienced that the boy followed my dad. My dad told me that he still to this day hears child's laughter in the spare bedroom. His new wife sees a boy sometimes in the hallway and things like keys, glasses, and other little things get misplaced and will not appear again until my dad gets frustrated and says, that is enough. I need my keys or glasses or whatever it is that's missing. (laughs) And then he'll go look around the house and they'll be back where they are supposed to be. I asked him how he knew it was the same spirit and he said he just feels the same kind of energy from the boy that he felt at the old house. I Mm. told him that is why you don't talk to spirits and especially not try to parent them. LOL. Well, that's all for now. You are amazing. Keep doing what you do best. Danielle. Wow. I mean – here we go. Here's his his <laughs> opportunity for redemption and to have a little bit more parenting in his life. Mm-hmm. That's kind of nice. I mean, clearly he appreciated having a parent that acknowledged him and also kind of course corrected some of his behavior because that child yeah. did not have to go on with the dad who was saying, Mm-mm. knock it off. But maybe it just reminded this child of like his, maybe his life with his other siblings. And he I do, just was- yeah. And or just like he just, I mean, maybe he passed away young and he missed his parents and he liked having this father figure around. I am glad that the little boy didn't follow Danielle because it sounds like Danielle would have been furious. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting point because I feel like so many times when we read stories about little kid spirits being around other little kid living human beings, Mm -hmm. it's often assumed that the connection is with the other children, that they just like want to play with the other kids. But it's interesting to think that maybe what the spirit is missing most is their parent. Their parent. That's so sad. Now I'm going to (laughs) cry. Now I'm sad about this. Aw. It is funny. Like I feel like I have lived away from my family now for almost like 12 years. Oh, my gosh. 11 years. That's wild. And so I don't see my family often, but like there are times where I'm like, I just want a hug from my mom or like, you know, I just want that like 
that feeling and so I don't blame especially when you're sick boy too oh, right yeah whenever you're sick you're like oh I just want to be in my childhood home on the couch watching like yes. 48 hours and for my mom's files like brushing my hair or like, SVO yes ugh, scratching my back yeah coming and taking yeah. my temperature my mom used to g- give us sleeping bags when we were sick we would literally be Aww. in a sleeping bag on the couch it was like <laughs> camping I think because we were you know you had the chills and you're so cold so we'd have like yeah. our sleeping bag and then we'd have like more blankets inside to like to Aww. try to get as warm as we possibly could but then also part of me thinks that it was her way of ensuring that we didn't like sweat through the couch and make it gross because we had something underneath <laughs> us I think it was a little bit of a germaphobe I was going to say, I feel like when you're sick, you get like hot and cold. So if you're in a sleeping bag, yeah, you might be cold for a minute, but then like all of a sudden you're like dripping sweat. Yeah. But then you just unzip and you throw it, throw it out, release the heat. Release it was a good trick. Heat. Did release you ever fake sick? Did you ever do what they did in ET and heat the thermometer in a light bulb? No. Did you? Yeah, of course. Really? Mm-hmm. Did, did it fool your parents? Yeah. I feel like okay here's the thing about being sick it never came at a time where you like wanted to be sick I remember like there were multiple times where I had birthday parties that I was super excited about or like sports games and I would get sick and I'd have a fever and I'd be so I would try so hard to pretend I was fine because I wanted to go do those things but then if I had a test that I didn't study for or I don't know, I was bullied in school or I just didn't want to like go do those things. And I, I would prefer to be sick at those moments so right. that I don't have to I go. I know. It never them. aligns quite right. Yeah. Aw. Well, that's fun. That's fun that you did that and got yeah. away with it. That's like, I feel like a classic childhood. Yeah. This feels very like 80s, 90s kid movie. Yeah. That, well, E.T., I guess. Yeah. We're talking about it right now. Now, as an adult, I could just be like, well, first of all, I don't have – I mean, you're my job, so we can we can reschedule whenever we want. But And let's when be I have real. Like, Both of us get sick so often with often. food issues. We do reschedule Oh, my gosh. The well, the amount of times we'll text each other and be like, um, so I just ate something and I think it had cheese or I think it had gluten and um, I'm throwing up, so I'll keep you updated how I'm feeling in 20 minutes. Yeah. And oftentimes it was like – Oh, I was just about to text you the same thing. I don't know what happened, but I am <laughs> down for the count. <laughs> At least we're on sync, in sync with that as well. I know. I actually need – we'll get back to ghost stories in a second, but I owe my doctor a call because I did another allergy test mm-hmm. and guess what came up, which I'm like in denial. So I need to call them and be like, what does this oh, no. actually mean? What? Eggs. Eggs. <gasps> Everything else was like barely there or maybe a little bit of a reaction. And then eggs eggs were just like red. It was like egg, 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 egg white, egg yolk. And then – but I eat eggs all the time. Like I literally make hard-boiled eggs like for lunch. I'll have like strawberries and hard-boiled egg. So I'm like, fuck. That's heartbreaking. Mm. I'm going to have to be vegan. But I'll I'll figure it out. I'll That's get back so to you. Sad. Hopefully it was a mistake. That's what I It's a fluke. Hopefully all my blood work was wrong. <laughs> it was someone else's. It wasn't yours. It got mixed up. <laughs> Actually, wait, to diverge one more time. Yes. I have have not told you about – remember when I went and got blood work and I was like, it actually was really tough because I usually faint – or I shouldn't say usually. Yeah. I faint every once in a while – from anything medical and especially from blood specifically, from seeing it, from talking uh-huh. about it too much, from – yeah. I, I won't watch you do it right now. now on yeah, screen. I know. That's I just started to get a little woozy. <laughs> but – so I, I know what fainting is like and usually I'm out for a couple of seconds and everything goes like black and it kind of like twinkles and then I have like a little dream and I come back and I'm just like, you know, a little teary and, and discombobulated, a little confused. Yeah. This past time, Sabrina, I actually partially think I died. Like, I think I was, like, in the astral plane. Uh, It was bad. Did I tell you about this? No. What happened? Oh, I I was, like, 
I was so rocked by the experience that I was bawling my eyes out and Brian had to come get me. And I was going, <laughs> like sobbing, like, like I had actually like seen a mass mean? murder in front of me. I, so I couldn't, could sense I was about to faint. So I said out loud, I'm feeling faint. And then it started to go like this and I go, I'm going to faint. So, and that was the last thing I remember. I was out. And so the woman, I presume the nurse had like turned around and started to, to care for me. <laughs> My dream was really long and it was really confusing. It was this woman, she was this, I was like sitting down talking to this woman. She was like, I don't know, maybe in her forties, she's black. It had natural hair that was kind of like a shoulder ish length. And we were sitting down and talking about something and I couldn't remember what it was, but I remember it was like a very serious thing that we're talking about and like decision, but it was really, it was really disorienting because all around her was like, you know, when on TV, when they try to depict someone on psychedelics and it's like really trippy and there's like yes. you know, paisley and like tie dye colors and everything's like, woo, woo, woo. everything was like that around us but we were like focused on each other and talking this is like the and OA then, I need to rewatch the OA actually that's so weird that you said that because I literally googled this morning is season three of the OA really not going to happen <laughs> and apparently it's not <laughs> it's um, not <laughs> yeah but I was like I was like so focused and then all of a sudden Sabrina I was getting ripped out and thrown back in so it was really difficult Wait, for me to actually your wake up guide. from it maybe because I was like I would literally flash back into my body and I I would see the nurse that was like putting the ice pack behind my head and like moving the chair down. But then I'd get oh. ripped back with her and she was kind of like standing there kind of reaching for me but like kind of watching me fall <gasps> back. And I went back and forth probably like three times and it was so scary. Like I literally thought I died. So I was sobbing. But, I could barely stand. But do you feel like the conversation you were having with this woman was – important like was it about your life it kind of felt like that but I don't but I can't remember what we talked about I just remember mm -hmm. that it was very that that what we were talking about was serious and maybe it was life but like it wasn't like a two-way conversation Rin, it was about me and she was you gotta talking. get your blood drawn again and we're gonna send you back <sighs> to the astral plane we're gonna do this it's gonna it, it do it for the sake oh of the God. people who are listening to this podcast, Corinne. No. <laughs> Sacrifice I literally couldn't yourself. talk about it for a week. I tried to tell my parents like two days after it happened. I just started bawling as I was telling them because it was I like – I feel like you had a spiritual experience. I, I must have because I've fainted plenty of times. And I was out for a while too because I was in that room. Brian, Brian was waiting for me because I knew I wouldn't be able to drive myself after getting my blood drawn. So he was in the waiting room and he was like, you were in there for like 30 minutes. And everyone else was in there for like five minutes, 10 minutes max. Yeah, but I was there for yeah, a long like time blood. out. Whoa. Anyway. I'm so to fascinated. Talk about <laughs> well, this is like a paranormal experience, guess, Corinne. Yeah. This is an encounter. I know. I can finally talk about it now that I'm like far enough past and I don't have the marking on my arm anymore from like the bruise Whoa. of the needle. But – yeah. Okay. It was I'm going to think about this more. I'm going to do some research. I really do think you had like, because this reminds me of when I astral projected and I had a conversation with this woman and I I told you that if I saw her on the street, I would recognize her. And it was a full on conversation about our life, my life. Yeah. And she was like guiding me. Like, I think it was a spirit guide of some sort. And we had that full conversation before I went through the astral plane and then got sucked back into my body. How did you feel when you were getting sucked back in? That that part was scary because it was it felt like something else was around that I needed. Remember, it was like yeah. someone whispered in my ear, "Wake up!" <coughs> right. Yeah, that part was scary. Oh, oh, wow! What a spiritual experience, Corinne. I'm sorry, it sounds scary and unsettling, but well, I do here think you are you having into these something. experiences, and you were totally fine. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't fine. I, mean, I haven't done it since. Scary, but yeah. But I've recovered. I've I've grown from it. You've grown from it. Maybe I wonder if we have the same person. What? Who was your person? Um, mine was a white lady, and she had very like curly, like short hair. Hmm. Okay. Hairstyle is very similar. Similar. Yes. Very similar. Yes. Interesting. All right. All right. 
This one I have had in my folder because you and I both have folders that's like yeah. Corinne's and Sabrina's. So when we yeah. see emails come in, we try to like steal them, steal them into our own folders. It's a game. So I've I've had this one ready to rock for a while. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. This is from let me make sure. So she she goes by yeah, her full name, Jennifer. Okay. Dear hey. Corinne, Sabrina, and Leah. First of all, please let me sing your praises. Newer listener, but I'm obsessed with you all and TGOG. I love everything you're doing. It's made my commute to home so much better. And I have wanted to write you for a little while because I want to share all of my experiences. But after a moment I had last night, I finally decided there's no better time than now. I've wanted to reach out because I've worked as a museum curator for 10 years and have definitely had things happen to me. And I remember you talking about how spooky museums could be in the past episode. Uh -huh which we just covered haunted museums. Yeah. So I was like, this is perfect. This is in addition to personal experiences that I've had with all of my loved ones who have passed. And this is a long one, so I apologize. But also I don't. don't. So here goes. Good. Yes, I like Jennifer. it. Yeah, <laughs> don't feel obligated to apologize. You never need to. No, don't be <laughs> sorry for telling us great stories ever. Yeah, we asked for this. So yeah, you can say you're welcome. And so yeah. sorry. And we can say we're sorry for making you type all of this. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. I had my first experience in the year 2000 when I was 16 and I knew nothing about the paranormal. My maternal grandfather passed away. And that evening after spending time at their house with my grandmother, I went home to get some rest. My mom stayed the night with her and my aunts. So I was home alone. I had a headache from crying, and after grabbing some aspirin from my parents' bathroom, I was walking through the house, which is kind of a long ranch-style house, and I saw his form standing in the kitchen doorway, leaning mm. on the right side of the doorframe like he always did when he came to visit. Oh. He was six foot four, so his stature was noticeable. His head had almost hit the top of the frame, and I stood there, staring at it, having never seen a shadow form or even knowing about them. I tried to tell myself that it was totally fine and not human-shaped at all and decided that I was going to walk through the door to prove that it was nothing. I swung wide to the left so that I would actually walk next to it and not straight through it. And as I walked by it, I put my right ar arm out to pass through the shadow at about waist height. This is so brave. <gasps> I would never do I this. I know. I'm also surprised that like she was able to get that close. I know. Yeah, he was still standing there. Yeah. I looked straight ahead as I was walking, but as my arm hit that spot, it was literally ice cold, and I got chills <gasps> up half of my arm. <sighs> I stopped and I looked back, but nothing was there. For a couple of months after my grandfather's passing, my parents' house was active with things physically moving around. And also, when our family went to his viewing at the funeral home, a butterfly fluttered to my grandmother and landed on her cheek momentarily <gasps> before floating away. On her cheek. Yes. <laughs> it's so gentle. It's so loving. It is really gentle. Ugh. Butterflies have always made their appearances during incredibly hard times. And I have no doubt that that was him and more recently my grandmother's too. Mm. So I have lost all of my grandparents at this point and I've had experiences with all of them. Several experiences with my maternal grandmother and I heard her say my childhood nickname Jenny in my right ear. My turntable and microwave both started on their own and a small framed picture that I had kept was turning completely around no, no matter where I put it. I also had a coworker come up to me one day while she was with me installing a museum exhibit and we started talking about light knocking that I was hearing on a case a foot behind me. She couldn't hear it, but she felt inclined to come over and tell me what she was feeling. She asked if oh. I had lost my grandmother recently and if I was German, which this grandmother was the only German connection that I have in my lineage. I immediately burst into tears, and she said that it was my grandmother wanting to get my attention to tell me how proud of me she was and how who I had become. Okay, so cool that her coworker has this ability. I know. Well, and too, it's like that they both experience different things at yeah. the same time. So it's like however you perceive the paranormal and however you're open to it, it's still happening around you. And so Whoa. you basically get that confirmation. So cool. Wow. It is wild how people's realities can be so different. Yeah. 
Well, that's like in my childhood home, I would see and feel a lot at the same time my mom would hear. She heard a lot. Yeah. And I didn't hear as much. I would love to like see what part of your brains are active in different ways when those paranormal yes. experiences are happening. That actually would be awesome. Like where does the see. like clairaudient and clairvoyant triggers in your brain? Right. I wonder if anyone has done this research before. If not, let's add it to our list of uh, business ideas. Great. Yeah, just got to go get qualified <laughs> to take some brain scans real quick. B BRB. We'll hire someone <laughs> to do that part. Yeah. We will watch it all happen. We'll hook ourselves up and then have actual Ooh. people that experience more, like can, can knowingly bring things in and experience. Yeah. And we'll be say, sort of like the you... baseline of like, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Yeah. How do we bring the ghosts though? We just bring haunted people in? Well, I think our podcast is proof that they're literally always <laughs> around. That's true. We've had okay. a lot of interference. So my brain, my brain went to um we're gonna need someone to be playing a Ouija board while we're in the the scans. No, because then we can't get out. <laughs> we're trapped. I'm not doing that. And I've already been trapped in a tight space before, so I can't. Uh, yeah, what are you wishing for, <laughs> Sabrina? You've already experienced <laughs> the elevator. Jeez. Okay. In August of 2018, my boyfriend was assaulted in our driveway, fracturing his skull and jaw in what? several spots. As oh I went gosh. out the next morning to clean up the traces of his fast food dinner that he had been bringing home and was scattered all over our yard and street, I broke down. Just then, two monarch brotoflies began floating around me, one landing on my chest right over my heart. I also recently had a reading with an amazing psychic medium who told me that my spirit animals, who told me my spirit animals that she saw were a ferret and an owl, which represent courage and wisdom. And the motto on the crest of the side of my family is concilio et animos. Sorry, I butchered Latin. <laughs> I've never taken Latin, so that's my excuse, which literally means with wisdom and courage. And I actually have that tattooed on my left shoulder. So I absolutely know that they're with me. On the Aww. other side of the fam, my mom, dad, and myself simultane simultaneously had experiences with the minute my paternal grandmother passed away and we were on three different continents. This was in October of 2018, shortly after my boyfriend's assault, and he was still healing. I was in Falaise, France at the time with him and his family, and I woke up when I thought I heard him walking around our room. I rolled over, and he was asleep next to me. I looked at my phone because I wondered if everyone was getting up for breakfast or something. It was only 5.35 a.m. I thought, oh my goodness, what if that was a ghost? I told myself <laughs> that... They had gentle footsteps, so if anything, they seemed nice and respectful. Maybe like a cute 18th century housekeeper. And then I fell asleep. <laughs> I love that that's where Jennifer's brain went. <laughs> She's like painting this whole picture. She's just, oh, it's just like the cutest little 18th century housekeeper. Just tiptoeing around, getting the things done. Oh my God, that's so adorable. You know what? Sometimes that's what you need to do. And if yeah. you, you know, create this like beautiful, positive, lovely experience. I know. Hey, it worked. She fell back asleep. The next yeah. week we got back and I found out that my grandmother had passed while we were gone. And my family had decided to wait until I was home to tell me. Oh. Here's how the dots were connected. She had passed away in a little town of Cushing, Oklahoma, at home in her bed. My mom, uncle, and two nurses were with her. Within seconds of her passing, one of the nurses told my mom that her phone, which was on the dresser across the room, was lighting up. My mom walked over and her phone was calling me. They all saw it. Stop. I never <gasps> got the call because I had my phone on airplane mode to save data. Wait, but the nurse's phone was calling Jennifer. I think the nurse was telling her mom that her mom's phone was lighting oh. up. Oh, oh my God, but still. But like the phone was making the call out to Jennifer. Was it's not like her, the mom was receiving Jennifer. the call. Yes. Oh so my So she had it on gosh. airplane mode. So she didn't get it. But as she hung as she hung up, and while she still had her phone in her hand, my dad called her from Saudi Arabia, telling her that he had a weird feeling. The time in Oklahoma was ten thirty five p.m., and he called her at ten thirty six. 
she showed me the this log on her phone. Wild. 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 I know I'm like holding my chest. I'm like, oh my <laughs> God. The time difference made at 5.35 a.m. in France when she was hearing the footsteps. Oh I heard my. her tiptoeing around me. I also definitely felt her on that day when I went to her house and it was the first time following her passing in several ways, physically with a hug that I undoubtedly felt when I walked in and with the air creatures that surrounded her house that day. Scissor tails by the dozens, monarch butterflies by the hundreds, and ladybugs by the actual thousands. They were all over her house, and I've never witnessed anything like that. I should that also mention beautiful. that she was a Gemini, which is an air sign. And if ever there were angels, my grandma Myrtle would be one. Those creatures Myrtle. being there all made sense to me. This is reminding me of Moana when the grandma <laughs> becomes the stingray. Uh, yeah oh this is so beautiful i mean the fact that is all of these critters flocked to the house after her passing is this like really it's it's like cinderella like she just was one with nature right she's truly innately good and all the creatures are like there in support to like celebrate her her life and her spirit being so special lifted yes wow so those are my familial, familial experiences, but I have several experiences at work too. I felt really scared in some of the museums and others feel like they are buzzing with spiritual hugs. For oh. eight years, I worked at the Oklahoma Territorial Museum in Gu- Guthrie, which is Oklahoma's territorial capital. Early on, I always felt very uncomfortable in a couple of particular spots in the museum. I became the Saturday's site attendant and I was there by myself all day. Almost all of my encounters were when I was alone, but I know that other people have experienced things too. My boss got a picture of the curator at the exhibit opening and there was the top half of a translucent man standing next to her. Oh, I want to see see this photo. I know. It's not attached, so. Oh man, Jennifer. Jennifer, if you can find it. Um, You could see his plaid shirt tucked into his belted jeans with faded out just a which faded out just above the knees and he looked exactly like ron swanson but <gasps> with a mona lisa <gasps> smile what I, now i just whacked my arm <laughs> oh, are you okay yeah just got okay. excited <laughs> yeah oh i know i wish i had a copy of the picture but i don't at all there oh. was this one corner of the museum that always felt like somebody was pacing and watching you The exhibit case in the corner downstairs and the one directly above it upstairs would set their alarms off during business hours and in the middle of the night several times a year. This went on for years and they had the alarm company out multiple times. They are laser barrier alarms that would have to actually be in the case to be set off. Just once the elevator went upstairs on its own. And I once heard a couple inaudibly arguing right next to me early morning one day as it should be noted that the walls of the museum are three feet thick concrete because we are in tornado country. The next bit's Mm. a little weird to explain, so bear with me. The entry to the museum is two glass doors. Two feet inside those doors is metal floor-to-ceiling accordion gate. And then four feet after the gate is another set of glass doors. All of these were locked individually. And one Saturday morning at 8 a.m., I'm walking up to the building. I specifically noticed the mail deliverer down the street because I felt bad for being late and not being able there to be there to let him drop the mail. So that meant that they had to slip the mail under the first set of glass doors. As I walk up to the museum door, there is about 10 pieces of mail intertwined in the accordion gate sporadically, but going from the top to the bottom. I stood there for a hot second, remembering that I had seen the mailman a block away. I got super scared, tried the door, and found it locked. Told myself that I had to go inside because that was my job. And then I ran (laughs) in with the music blaring on my phone and set the museum up for the day. Ew! Okay, so there were glass doors that were locked. So the the mailman slid them under the glass door. And then something took all of them. And shoved them in between the barrier, like made a little pattern in the barrier that was like four feet away. That's I'm so sweating weird. Now. That is 
Yeah, that is freaky. And also if the mailman was like that far, like that close, that means it happened within a short period of time. Right. So it was like a gust of energy swoop, swooshing it all up and... I so wonder what would have happened if the, if the mail delivery person had like turned around. Did it happen as soon as they turned their back? Ugh. And walked like if they just peeked back, would they see all the mail like swirling up and, and getting Wait. pushed into the grate? You know what I'm picturing is from The Grinch, the live action one, where he's in the mail room and he's taking the mail from people's slot and he goes – and he's like throwing it into the wrong ones and like mixing it up. And I forget what the lines are, but he's like Christmas card for the – Yeah. Anyway, that's one. I cannot – yeah. That's funny. I mean maybe – Maybe that was sort of the vibe. Just stuff it. Or maybe they were like trying to get it. Maybe they were trying to be helpful and actually push it all the way into the museum. And they were just like kept trying to shove it through the slots and them getting stuck. And they're like, let me try another piece of mail on another slot. And it just keeps well, getting stuck. Well, now I'm wondering. Stuck. Yeah. I, I, now I'm wondering if like there was a piece of mail that the ghost didn't want to be delivered. Oh, interesting. And they were like searching Secret. through it looking for something. Yeah. It's like wow. the college acceptance letter that, or like the <coughs> the wrong, I don't know. Yeah. The I mean, poor, they're the, the report card. Of the, museum. the report card's coming the in. The report card. And they can't let the museum curator know that they've been failing. Yeah. Or maybe it was just going to like expose them that maybe, maybe it was like a transfer to another museum that was like <gasps> accepted. And they were like, no, I don't want to leave. You can't send me to a oh. different museum. This is my house. <laughs> That's a really sweet – I like that. Yeah. But then sad at the same time. But there is a sad story behind all of this activity that finally clicked with me after the fact. In 1993 or 1994, a schizophrenic man broke into the museum when they were closed, but the director was there working. And this man was convinced that his wife was being held hostage in the basement of the museum. Oh, no. He ended up holding the director hostage for several hours, and the police – had a standoff in the entryway with this man in the museum and unfortunately shot this man. I had always thought that there might have been specific artifacts or the land itself that was causing these things to happen, but it recently dawned on me that maybe it had been him the whole time, like his spirit. Yeah. I feel like this is the longest email and I haven't even made it to 2019. At the beginning of the last year, I began a management position at 9... 99's Museum of Women's Pilots in Oklahoma City. I no longer work there, but honestly, the spooky experiences that I had there are one of the only reasons that I was sad about leaving. Immediately, I noticed the energy there, absolutely buzzing. It's a museum of female pilots who definitely had strong personalities, and mm. at least one once a day, I would experience the sensation of doing someone sticking their head over the sensation of someone sticking their head over my shoulder as if they were saying, what you doing? But not in a scary way. More like in a cute, sassy, broad kind of way. When that thing would happen, sound was blocked from my ear. Like oh. when you put your hand up a few inches away <gasps> oh. from your ear. Go I'm ahead and try it. Now. And then she said, parentheses, wait two seconds. It's like that. Oh, my gosh. On Saturday, again with the Saturdays, I was up on the ladder painting over the doorway next to the front door, and I heard a woman clear as day and with both of my ear holes say, I ought to have known better than to navigate that storm. It was so clear that I thought it was someone at the door about to walk in. So I got down off the ladder, getting ready to greet them, and nothing. I walk over to the window to see if there was a car in the parking lot with visitors. Nothing. It was awesome. I had never heard (laughs) anything like that. What I noticed in the voice, though, was how articulate it was. It was super Midwestern and middle-toned. Our voices tend to be deeper over time, and this sounded like a woman in her 30s or 40s. Over the next week, I tried to figure out who it might be. Most early pioneers in aviation unfortunately died in crashes, but these were usually in air shows that would have taken place during nice weather. I read about so many of the early aviators, and there is only one person who's associated with a storm of any kind, Amelia Earhart. I was wondering if they would be able to figure out who it was, but that's... I mean, mean, if it was Amelia Earhart, incredible. Yeah, and then it makes me wonder, like, how... 
Because there's no way Amelia Earhart, maybe, maybe Amelia Earhart's only haunting that museum, but in my mind, she's like haunting all over the place because she has connections to so many different places. Right. And so the fact that she just like popping in. Well, and also I feel like, like Jennifer's talking about the energy in this place and how it's just absolutely buzzing. And I just picture it like being a place that Amelia Earhart or other spirits of of women who were kind of like pioneers in this in this industry wanted to congregate. It's just like, oh, let me yeah. go hang out with my fellow female aviators. Yeah, I love I like like to think that they have a little club, a female aviator club that they all hang out. They walk around the museum and say, "Oh, like, you know, I didn't I never lived long enough to see a plane like this. How what was it like flying that?" Yeah. Right, right. They're like, oh, wow, they really upgraded the headgear and goggles. I could barely see yeah. out of mine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I like that already- this is our aviation conversation because we know nothing else. Because <laughs> we know about- nothing. We're like, wow, nice. Goggles. Plane, yeah. new. Goggles, new. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it didn't go like that at all. We just literally know nothing. <laughs> This is the reason I've hesitated to email in the past. Saying that you heard Amelia Earhart will automatically bring up some questions, but there's no doubt in my mind that it was her. After eliminating all of the other potential pilots that died in crashes that have artifacts in the museum, I was sitting at home and decided to revisit a documentary about her that I watched a couple years ago called Amelia Earhart, The Lost Evidence. It's on YouTube and it's fascinating. Check it out. I'm not going to get into all of the details. But there were some pretty cool historical arguments suggesting that she was blown off course, leaving Howland Island in 1937, crash landing on a small island, and being captured as a prisoner of war. The Japanese Navy already had a significant presence there at the time, so it's thought that she was captured by the Japanese and made a prisoner of war. I start watching Mm. the documentary, and within a few seconds, there's a clip of her speaking. And the moment she spoke, I knew that that (gasps) was the voice that I heard. The articulation, the tone. It was 1,000% her voice. I hear this, and I say aloud, oh, my God. And the second I say it, there are two knocks on the closet door to my right, and it popped open. And then there were two knocks on my great-grandmother's phonograph player that I have in my room to the left. And I felt a hand on my shoulder, not pushing down, but softly squeezing front and back, and then a release. As if, as I felt the hand on my shoulder, my dog, who was sleeping, shot up and just stared at me wide-eyed for a second before relaxing her eyes and laying back down. Okay, so the Amelia moment- Earhart is like your ghost pal. <laughs> She's like, yep, that's me. Don't be scared. It was knock, me. Knock, 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 knock. Hand on your shoulder. <laughs> hey. Hey. You were right. It was me. The moment Whoa. I felt the release on my shoulder, I burst into tears in the way that I never have experienced. It was like I saw her. I felt her emotions, and I felt the greatest heartbreak that I have ever known, like being truly doomed. I should mention Whoa. that I've had cancer twice in my life, so I've – Felt doomed before, but not like this. And I cried for the next 24 hours. I couldn't (gasps) stop. My face was raw from wiping tears away, and I went to work at a museum and continued about my day. And then that next night, around 10 p.m., it just stopped, and I was fine. I can't explain it. I It was the most extreme empathy that I've ever experienced. And this is what got me through the next few months before quitting. I felt like I was helping share the story of these women. And a few weeks later, I was up on the same ladder in the same spot that I heard the voice and I thought I saw my intern walk into the office. I hopped down to ask him a quick quick, quick favor and jogged into the office, but no one was there. I was right behind him, I thought. I just saw the top and back of their head, but it was short, dark, due with a collar similar to a hoodie or, or maybe a flight jacket. One day I was looking up when I reached for the front door to lock it and I heard a woman say, come back here. Not in a spooky way. It was more like a lady trying to catch a taxi that was speeding away from her. Was it the same voice? Honestly, I couldn't tell because it was just so quick, but the tone was similar, but I can't be sure. It was interesting because I had my purse on and I was walking around. So it could have seemed like I was actually, like I was about to actually walk out the front door. Like I said, my time there ended abruptly, which is sad, but there are definitely spirits there that I was ready to hang out with for the long haul. (laughs) 
I haven't had anything happen in quite some time until last night when I was laying in bed. I was sleeping in a tee in my undies and it got too hot under the covers. I kicked one of my legs out and I rolled over to that in-between stomach and side position with my booty do was <laughs> but my booty but my booty do was front and center. Right as I'm dozing back off, I feel a single finger poke. On Sorry. the booty? I feel a single finger poke me in the exact center of my right butt cheek. Oh. <laughs> Without opening my eyes, I just shouted, nope. And I rolled back over, covering my head with the two warm covers and eventually falling back asleep. I didn't. It didn't feel threatening or malicious, but more like a feisty grandparent playing a joke. Bopping the booper, <laughs> if you will. I've been telling myself it all day that playful. it was my maternal grandmother, Grandma Dot, trying to get my attention. I hope you enjoyed my stories. Stay spooky and see you on the other side, Jennifer. Okay, Jennifer, you have had so many experiences. So many. And all of them, for the most part, are positive. Like, I don't, I'm trying to think of any that were negative. That, I mean... Not really. The only thing that could potentially be a little scary was like the male in the in the slot. I mean, I guess I guess any experience with the paranormal is yeah. scary because you're not expecting it. It's startling. But after the fact, you don't look back on it as like that was one of the scariest moments of my life. Like you can look back right. with some fondness or fascination. And the spirits didn't seem to like want to harm her. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the booty poke is my favorite because I always – you know, we had a long discussion way back when like early on. About sleeping with your feet out of the covers and being afraid that like a demon was just going to grab them. And so we were like, well, what do you do? Because you need like some part of your body out of the covers. So we were like, kneecap, you know? Um, but in the hot summer months lately, I'm like a butt out of the covers. And like that's just the part of my body that's out. And I, if I'm a ghost, I would 100% poke the butt. Yeah. It's so tempting. There's so much space to poke in the booty. Yeah. It's, a big it's much old better thing. than toes. Big old round yeah. booty. Big old round booty. It's like a good landing pad for a little ghost <laughs> poke. For a little finger. A finger. Oh, a finger poke. A little finger. For a finger. A finger. A poke and finger, baby. A, ping. a finger. <laughs> Give it a ping. <laughs> ping. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Just incredible experiences from her grandparents yeah. and all Amelia? the love and support. And then Amelia Earhart. Oh, cool. Fast. Hell yeah. I love so how. So cool. This is the best thing about you and I, Corinne. I'm going to float our boats for a second. We just believe everything. True. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no one's given me good enough reason to not believe. I know. I'm, I'm just like, there's no question in my mind. Like, I don't doubt it one bit. I'm like, yeah, no. Jennifer, it was Amelia Earhart. And she's, and now I believe full heartedly that Amelia Earhart and you are bonded forever and if you ever need her she will come put her hand on your shoulder uh, yeah it's just really fascinating too uh, it makes me wonder if maybe she is spending time like in museums and with different artifacts and with people who who have a connection or or like historians for her mm -hmm. if she's sticking around until the mystery of her disappearance is fully solved and she's like Ooh. trying to give bits and pieces here and there to people. Like the storm. Hey, Amelia, Amelia, maybe Jennifer is going to solve Amelia's mystery. This is her purpose she's, in life. Yeah. You gotta write her autobiography for her. Like be the be the oh, scribe. The scribe. For her. Automatic Ooh. writing. Be the, yes. Be the muse. Have her channel through Have you. Have her channel through you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So amazing. Okay. So. A couple of weeks ago, I read an email from a listener about a 23andMe or Ancestry thing. Ooh. And we have another one. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah, wait. Not an update. A new one. A new one. A new, a new one. one. Wow. And I'm, okay. I'm just, I'm, I don't know. Maybe because I have a lot of my own family drama. <coughs> I just love family drama. Um, well, it's all, it's like one of those things where it's like, why are there family secrets today? Because there's so many things that can expose that people just need to I know. start get, I know. getting it out. So Betsy wrote to us about um, a family scandal that came out. Okay, oh, it's okay. called Ancestry.com Strikes Again DNA Family Scandal for Your Encounters episode. 
Okay. Hi, ladies. I'm currently listening to your Encounters 139 episode where you tell the story of one of your listeners' family scandals involving DNA testing on 23andMe. Welp, your call for similar stories has been heard loud and clear. Buckle up. Yes! Several years ago, my mom, who is obsessed with family lineage and all things DNA, got the entire family, me, my dad, two brothers, and my uncle, to spit in a tube to be shipped off to Ancestry.com. Fast forward several months, maybe even a year, and I'm over at my parents' house when my mom casually tells me that Ancestry.com is telling her she has a sister. According to this website, this woman, I'm going to call her Sally, had a high enough DNA match to my mom that she was either her aunt, niece, or half-sister. All those family members would theoretically share share the same amount of DNA with you. We tried to do some digging but couldn't really find any connection to this alleged sister. And on top of the lack of evidence, Sally was well into her 70s and 80s or 80s and wasn't really reachable via the internet. So we started to move on. But within a matter of days, I got an email from Ancestry notifying me that I got a message to my account. I go to see what it is, and lo and behold, I have a completely different lady, let's call her Dina, claiming to be my aunt, aka my mom's half-sister. I asked her if she knew Sally, and she goes, oh yeah, Sally's my aunt. So after a long stint of back and forth and getting Dina connected with my mom, we all realized that my grandma had an affair with Dina's dad well after my mom was born. Dina and my mom are about 10 years apart. So that means that Dina and my mom share a dad and my mom learned the man who raised her was not actually her biological father. Wow. Unrelated, but also very much related. I'm very Wait. confused. Okay. So. Because if the mom had the Wait, affair. Wait, so does that mean that they're, re- they're full siblings? No. Wait, they don't, they don't share a dad. They share a mom, right? The mom had the affair. The, the grandma had an affair with Dina's dad, which is, but then. It says that means Dina and my mom share a dad and the man that raised her was not actually her biological father. So that would mean that Dina's her full sister. I'm very confused. Why is this hard? I, okay, wait. I think, yes. Okay, so Dina, so, okay. Betsy's mom, Betsy's mom's mom mm-hmm. had an affair okay. with Dina's dad. So, okay, Betsy's mom's mom had an affair with this man and had both Dina and Betsy's mom, meaning that Dina and Betsy's mom are full sisters. Oh. Okay, here's why I'm confused. Is if they're full sisters, did did, did Betsy... Was she raised fully or was Betsy's mom raised fully by her dad and not her mom? Because you're the, it's so much easier for a man to impregnate yeah. many people and, and, but you can't be pregnant and have a child and, and then, hide the fact that you have a child unless like the parents separated. And so Betsy's mom's mom was gone for a couple of years. But then what happens to the – okay, we, we need more answers. <laughs> we need more questions. We need yeah. way more I, information we, here. Wait. I just said we need more questions. I need more answers. My <laughs> brain has too many questions. We have more questions that we need answers <laughs> okay. to. Okay, so I think it is that – yes, so Dina's – Dina and then Betsy's mom are full sisters is what I'm interpreting this as. Okay, yeah, we just don't understand the how that happened, how yes. they were raised yes. unaware of each other. We have questions. Yeah. Yes. Unrelated, but also very much related, before we found out any of this, it has always been a running joke, but was also very much believed that my mom's oldest brother, she has two brothers, was a half-sibling because my grandma refused to marry my grandpa for a long time. 
So the theory is that she got pregnant by a sailor passing through and finally gave in to marry my grandpa so that she wouldn't have a baby out of wedlock. If this is true, my mom and both of her brothers all have different dads. So Betsy's mom's mom. So Betsy's grandma was uh, having some fun. Yeah. Sleeping well, around. Yeah. And Good keeping it a secret. <laughs> I have yeah. I have a relative who has a, a similar similar upbringing, but was aware that all of the siblings had different um, fathers. But just didn't n- they weren't always sure like who who their dad was or who was what. And so twenty three and me solved it for them. Wow, Ugh. for that that. But at least they cool. they went in knowing what they were looking for. Like this is truly yeah. like a this oopsie. is just a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, circling back to the new scandal unleashed on our family, we learned all of this shortly before the holidays. My mom's family is who we see around Christmas, so we all thought it was going to be a more drama-filled evening than usual. But when it finally came time for her to spill her guts, nobody seemed all that surprised or interested. I guess with my grandma's past and the ongoing family rumor about my uncle's parentage, it was not as hot of gossip as we figured it would be, lol. After asking my mom if she was okay when she found out that her dad wasn't really her dad, she said, At first I was shocked, but that quickly faded because he's the man who raised me, so he'll always be my dad. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time to give this a read. I'm a relatively new listener, but I love the pod. pod. You always keep me interested and entertained and inspired me to launch my own paranormal podcast, DFWG Podcast. Keep up the good work, stay spooky, and remember to be wary of sending in your DNA. You never know what family secrets will come back with the results. Betsy. Wow. I mean, that is – yeah, I guess like just figuring out – that's one of the things I didn't think think about. When when something – when you get matched with a relative, yeah. there's still a lot of investigation to happen because it doesn't just say like you have a sister. It's like – you could this person could be also your aunt or your sister Mm -hmm. or like you have to figure out how things happened and the lineage but i guess the good thing for them is that there were already some people paired up who had figured a lot out and so they got answers really quick yeah i think the worst thing that could happen i mean it's it's awful to find out like a relative you thought was someone in your life is actually not who they say they were or whatever like that's a really tough pill to swallow i think but I think the worst thing would be to find out that, like, a family member of yours is a serial killer. Oh, I was going to say switched at birth. Oh, that's pretty bad, too. Like an accidental (gasps) hospital switch where, like, your family truly has no idea that you're not biologically theirs. And there's There's, another family out there that also has that same mystery. There's a movie that came out this past year called Parallel Mothers, and it's very much that – story and it's very sad because one of the babies dies like very very young oh oh that is really sad yeah all right well i'll look it up but i think to your point it would be awful to find out if you had a relative that was a serial killer if you knew the relative like if it Mm. i feel like if it came out that was like your your dna i don't know i feel like if i like knew i was distantly distantly related to a serial killer, I'd be like, that's pretty fucked up, but also. Oh, I thought you were going to say fucking cool. But also. <laughs> cool. Right? Like, I mean, it's yeah, really yeah. disturbing. No one wants for anyone to be a mass yeah. murderer or kill anybody. But it's also like, it's one of those things where it's like, I mean, it's like the, what is it? Like the six degrees of Kevin Bacon or five degrees. I can't remember. I can never remember right. what it is. Like a lot of people probably are distantly related yeah. in some way to a murderer. So I'm not saying my dad's a murderer. Like I know he's not a serial killer. <laughs> I know. But but my dad is a man. All right, everyone. This is the last episode we ever get to do. Uh, <laughs> exposing way too many family secrets. Wait, why? What were you going to say? Okay, no. I was going to say is my, my dad is just a man of mystery. He's lived all over the world. Um, he's had – multiple wives that he didn't necessarily tell us all about he has other kids i there is at least you know about the kids i know about those two i don't know if there's any others out there yeah true True. and he's also he he's also just not the most forthcoming about his life so um 
I do sometimes wonder if he were to put his DNA into a 23 me, what would um, populate? How many people? You might have a lot of siblings. This would actually be pretty cool to figure out. I would just feel Wait. bad for all of those siblings. D- you would know because you've done 23 or me and But they're probably right? young, younger. Oh, he likes yeah. younger women. It would take a while. So, yeah. And you also have to – I think you have to toggle on that other people can reach out to you, that you can be like matched with potential relatives, oh. right? Because mm. I don't think I toggled that on for myself because I was at the place where I was like, I don't want the responsibility of like <laughs> – explaining things to long distance cousins and whatnot but now i'm kind of like maybe Maybe. i will turn it on a new hobby interesting right yeah figure it out yeah wow all right well we have a lot more questions uh yeah about that we need to know everything (laughs) (laughs) tell us more tell us the drama (laughs) tell us the dramas okay this is called these scary ass kids see everything Hey, ladies, let me start off by saying I love your podcast. I work night shift at an optical lab, and your creepy stories and silly banter get me through my long shifts. This might be kind of long, so let me jump to my stories. It's not long. Let me preface that. <laughs> I'm saying that. In the 70s, my mom lived in an old farmhouse in the middle of nowhere in Quebec in a town called St. Pierre de Wakefield. My sister was about three or four when she approached my mom and in French said, Mama, who is that man? My mom has always been a believer, so immediately she calls to the landlord. What is the landlord's response? Oh, that's not a man. That's my mother-in-law. Watch out. She's a bitch. (laughs) Now, Uh this is when any normal person would get the fuck out of there, but no, my my mom stayed. The next day, the woman, man to be my sister, had a dog with her. So with another phone call, my mom was told that the dog had been killed by a farmer when he was caught on his property. Just a few of the experiences that they've had are listed below. The spirit asked my sister to go into a door hinge with her. My mom said immediately, never go anywhere with a spirit. Yeah, this feels very Coraline, doesn't it? Yeah. My response every time that I've heard the story was, what in the world resides in a door hinge? They used this woman's previous room as a guest room, and the people who slept there always complained of creepy, dark feelings. During a jam session, one of their guests decided that she was ready for bed before her husband, and then she felt so uneasy laying in the bedroom that she decided to stay up. As she approached the stairs, she said something pushed her. She fell down an entire flight of stairs, and thankfully, she walked away with only scrapes and some bruising, but I can only guess that she was scarred for life. After this experience, my my mom decided to use this room for storage. About a year later, she was sitting on the toilet and she said she was thinking, not out loud, only thinking of making this bedroom a guest room again. As she was thinking this, her boxes that she had stacked up all fell over. All of them. All of them. Not enough to make you want to relocate yet? Well, (laughs) one night my mom had blown out her last candle and was out of matches because, yep, this house wasn't creepy enough in the light. But it didn't have electricity. Anyway, she blew the candle out, yelled for the dog, the living one, and waited. He always followed her upstairs, but not tonight. She goes on a hunt for him, and where is he? He's hiding under the table, trembling. She runs with him to the bedroom where my sister was sleeping and just starts thinking that she wished her boyfriend, my sister's dad, would come home. And she said that she closed her eyes and repeated, come home, Dennis. Or, oh, sorry, it's pronounced Denis. Come home, Denis. Come home, Denis. He was at a local bar when he got the feeling that he needed to come home ASAP. Stop. When he got home, they shared their stories and finally decided that it was time for them to move. On the last day in the home, my sister stood by a mirror that had been hanging in the same spot that they moved in. My mom to her boyfriend said, don't forget that mirror your dad bought us. The mirror crashes to the ground. My sister walked away without a scratch. She is now 42 and remembers nothing. But on to my last story, just a little backstory. My parents my parents split when I was three, and my dad moved back in with his mother and three of his brothers. So I was raised in this home part-time and came to be very close with all of them. Unfortunately, they were all alcoholics, and three of them passed when I was 12. Aww. Starting with my dad and all within seven months of each other. Oh, my God. The remaining brother had been sent to prison and lived – there until I was 19 and a brand new mommy to a boy who my uncle called little Larry 
after him, of course. Little he would Larry. talk to me. He would walk me out to the car when I was pregnant and place one hand on my back and one on my belly, telling me to move slow because I had special cargo in there. And he'd plan to take on the grandpa role because that's what my dad would want him to do. Unfortunately, mm. four months later, after I had my son, whom I did not name little Larry, my <laughs> uncle was diagnosed with liver cancer and he was gone in two weeks. My, oh my grand gosh. buried four of her children. Enough of the sadness. Now onto the good stuff. When my son was 10 months old, we were walking home alone, and out of nowhere, he began repeating, the man, the man, while shaking his head no. I helped him, and he cringed and continued shaking his head and squeezing his eyes shut. I immediately called my mom, knowing that she had experience, and I asked her what to do. Tell it to leave your son the F alone. So I did just that, and silence. My son stopped. He stayed in my lap, but he was no longer cringing, no longer screaming. Fast forward a few days later, and we're leaving our apartment, and what does my son say? Mommy, the man's coming. This went for a little over a year. It was always, open the door for the man. Here comes the man. And he would play in his room for hours with the man. He was no longer scared, so I left it alone. Fast forward a few years. We hadn't heard about the man since he was about three, and he was now five. When one day, flipping through old photos with my grand, he stopped on a page and said, Mom, do you remember the man? That's the man, Mom. (gasps) Oh, my gosh. I had to look for my grand to tell me who it was. It was my uncle in his late teens and early 20s, and my heart melted knowing that my son got more time with my uncle than we thought. These and are my he stories. was the one who said he was going to be the grandfather and like he was going to yes. play that role. Oh, gosh. Yes. See you on the other side, Alicia. Wow. Alicia, I'm so sorry for your losses. It sounds so tragic. And I, I can't imagine losing all those people in such a short amount of time. That's really tough. But I love that even though your son was scared of the man, because, I mean, that's unsettling. And I wonder what the man was saying, what your uncle was saying to him. But the fact that he was able to put it together, that's like the I best know. kind of story. The, he, yeah, the, the fact that he remembered, too. Like, it was, it was enough time spent and enough of, like, an impression and imprint made on him that he could remember from three years old what this guy looked like two years yeah. later. There's a lot going on in, ki- in a kid's life. And for him to be yeah. able to remember, be like, oh, that's him. Remember him? I haven't seen him in a long time, but I remember the man. And that's the man. That's him. That's the man. Wow. Truly amazing. And then that first place that her mom lived in. Oh, my God. I know. So spooky. The, the being pushed down the stairs and like being okay. But that's so physical. The mirror coming crashing down. Like right. this is a really malicious, angry spirit. And also trying to go into the door hinge. It's like, it, was that like a portal? What is that? Like, is that how they're going to like steal the souls of the children in this home? Ew, I don't like that. I know. It's very creepy to think about. Yeah. Mm. Ugh. Oh, and the poor dog. So scared. I know. I'm glad they finally left. And that. I know. Her mom and Denis were like on the same wavelength. Of <clears throat> being able to connect oh. to one another and be like, oh, something is wrong. Right. That's so cool. It does make me wonder if that was a result of being in the home, if there was some sort of like paranormal portal vortex thing that kind of like what amped up. What am I trying to say? Like I'm I'm losing the word for this, but basically like elevating people's abilities or yeah, yeah. is her mom just always that open and able to connect hmm. with people? Or just like the idea of being with a partner if you're like that in love and intimate together you can you just have this connection with one another mentally yeah you just know it's kind of like parents like the parents intuition the mother's intuition where you just like you just know things you just know whoa okay this is this kind of ends up turning into like a um a story time with photos oh okay but it begins with a story It is from our listener, Raquel, and it is called Incubus, Past Lives, and Meeting with the Devil. Hello, my spooky ladies. My name Uh is Raquel from the good old land, Canada, and I have a very interesting life. 
Before we get started, I've been listening to your podcast for about three years now, and it gets me through the boring train rides post Ms. Rona and days at school, even if you two scare the hell out of me. <laughs> As I'm writing, I'm sitting bored out of my mind in my animation class while listening to Encounters 86. Now, a little background about me. My family, mostly my dad's side, is very open to the paranormal, causing some sides of the family to get a little topsy-turvy. My dad and his sisters used to live in a haunted house, one of my aunts would play with a shadow man in the corner, and the dead doctor upstairs would wave to them. My oh, grandma could gosh. have possibly been abducted by little greys, and my deceased older cousin still likes to be in his younger sibling's life time to time. But those are not what we're talking about today. What? A thing has been pushing itself in my mind, and I just need to get this out. Okay. Okay. This story is called Incubitch. <laughs> We're going to get real deep and personal. So this all started on November 24th, 2019. I remember because I posted it on Reddit. I'm 15 at the time of this story. Ever since I first moved into the house I live in, still to this day, I always knew about some kind of presence in my room. It's always cold in my room and even creepier in my closet is the opening to the attic. Six-year-old little me knew something was sus. Like most people my age, I was depressed about my relationship status and had the self-confidence of a flea. I never really liked how I looked. I was really insecure because I looked a little thicker than most girls my age. This night, I fell asleep at 11.30. My mom works late and I hate sleeping home alone. And I kept waking up from flashing nightmares. They were like one of those layered dreams. The nightmare stopped, or so I thought, and I shifted over to my side. I have this huge stuffed dog, so I hugged him, and I was lying on my stomach a bit. But then I started to get this really weird feeling, and I remember looking at my dark ceiling and feeling like I was wide awake. And I had never had sex in my life, so I was really weirded out, but after a few seconds, I knew what it was. At that time, I felt pounding as my pelvic started to rise. It was like someone was grabbing me and I couldn't move. Oh no. I tried to scream, but I couldn't. Then something happened. I don't know how, but I broke out of this barrier. I've moved my elbow and moved onto my back. It felt like there was a barrier of energy surrounding me, like I forced it to release me, and then everything stopped. I looked around my dark room and hid under the covers. I know, Demon Repellent 101. I stayed like that for a bit and then I screamed to my mom and she had me sleep in her room with her. I remember how shaky I was that night. I was beyond terrified and I slept with my mom for almost a month until my room got staged by a friend who was a Reiki master. Now here's why I'm pretty sure I manifested it. Well, for almost a year before I became fascinated with spirits, I even made a story based off of them. I'm a writer. The Incubus was a trope in the anime community, so I fell in the bandwagon. Every lunch period, I would read articles about them, I would watch YouTube videos about them, etc. But thank God I actually learned about them, or I wouldn't have been so informed about them. But maybe that's a double-edged sword. This Incubitch crept its way inside my brain, using my curiosity to its advantage. It waited and stayed with me until I was insecure enough to attack. I previously learned that they attack when you're the most delicate. I also learned that they ask for consent in your dreams, so maybe I gave it to it unknowingly. But I'm happy mm. to say a year later, I'm more comfortable with my body and myself. In quarantine, I was able to self-reflect more. The saying to myself, you know, love yourself before loving someone else is really true. I'm not in a relationship, but I've become good friends with someone I've been crushing on. So I'm doing oh. so much better without that leech of an incubitch in my life. At times, I kind of miss it, but I know it's for the best. I try not to think about it, and I want to – and I wish I could say that was the only thing that happened to me, but nope. I see shadow figures around my house, and I even caught a big one on a Polaroid when I was playing with – playing in my room. I used to be super freaked out by them, but now I just openly tell them to fuck off. Short story, but I was singing in my echoey stairwell, and a dark, sunken face flew around me. I acknowledged it, but told it to fuck off and continued to sing for another half an hour. A few nights ago, while vibing out to some music in my living room, I then saw a dark blob humanoid thing 
pop from the kitchen to look at me and then pop out of sight in an instant. I told myself to keep vibing and then continue rocking out. I love this. She's like, it, whatever. Just everything that happens, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Um, next, shall I talk about my psychic mom? My mom's the type of person that thinks learning about your past lives are creepy. But for me, it's the complete opposite. Thanks, Dad, for letting me watch Chucky when I was seven. So <laughs> this started before I was born, and my mom was with her old dressmaker. The dressmaker suddenly asked my mom to read her tea leaves. My mom asked the lady why, but the lady was like, I just feel like it's part of your energy. So when my mom read it, everything seemed to be true. It turns out my mom can read tea leaves and coffee grounds, and I've seen her do this a few times. It's really interesting. I keep asking her to do it more often, but she doesn't. That is so cool that her dressmaker was like, I can tell based on your energy you can read these tea leaves. Yeah. And also, how? how? Like, is it – I want to know what the process is of reading tea leaves. Like, do you genuinely have to learn what the messages are or does it just come to you and it just travels through you and you have literally no idea what you're doing? It just, like, comes out of your your being. You just know. Interesting. Because if you're know. chosen – Because it's, it's kind of like tarot, one. right? Like, yeah. you, can, you can learn tarot and, like, what combinations mean – but you don't always – there's other people that are much more, like, in tune and can also feel based on, like, the sp- you and the spirits around you kind of like – Yeah, I don't know. Tarot is just aiding them in their reading of you. Right. Whereas tea leaves, it feels like the spirit has to come through you. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Raquel says, past life regression. I did the same past life – hypnosis online as you guys or as you did Corinne and I got some results I even drew some pictures based on what I saw I'm not the best artist but I'll link them below for a 16 year old kid I have an old soul it was August 6 2020 it was nighttime I was home alone and decided to try a session online because you guys inspired me I popped in my headphones got in a comfy position and started listening At one point, the right side of my body started shaking and burning. I had to open my eyes and shake it off because it hurt so much. Fun fact, I've always had problems with my right side. I have a brain injury and the surgery affected my coordination. So I switched over to my left side after and had to relearn everything. I have cerebral cavernous malformation, CCM. I was born with it. I still don't feel connected to my right side like I do to my left. It's like all the light bulbs are there are just constantly flickering. Mm -hmm. End of fun fact. I had a hard time. I have a habit of constantly daydreaming like I can't turn it off. But eventually I was able to relax and sink deep down. And this is what I saw. So the first scene was all in third person. I was this little boy, 10 years or so, 10 years old or so. I forgot what my hair color was. I first saw blonde shoulder length, but then later saw brown. But I remember the clothes. It was a dark colored vest, like blue, some kind of dark trousers, a white collar with puff sleeves, and a pink flat bow around my neck. I was also wearing boots that were dark too. I was kneeling down by some flowers in an closed garden. Hello, Lei. I remember the iron gate. It then pans up to what looked like stone brick towers on a huge hill covered in flowers and plants. And this is the photo. This is where it becomes a photo session. Oh. Okay. The second scene was in first person, but I couldn't feel the ground beneath my feet. It was like I was floating. I ran past a couple, a woman in a whitish gold dress and had a matching fan. She had the brightest red lipstick on and an obviously fake mole beside the lips and big (laughs) platinum blonde hair. I remember her shocked expression when looking down at me. Behind her holding her waist was a man in a white long wig who also had a mole, but I'm pretty sure that one was real. I forget his suit, but I want to say that it was in the color scheme of red, blue, and white. But then I checked it out, and it's the French Revolutionary Army uniform. It's the one with the two crosses in the media. Interesting note, I'm related to an aristocratic, whoa, words, to an aristocratic military family from the French Revolution. So could I have been an old family member from back in the day? 
and she sent that's so this cool photo oh my gosh wow it's also interesting to think this is what the couple looked like so fascinating like the fact that they looked down like the couple the woman looked down and was shocked to see that makes me think that they weren't supposed to be there yeah like maybe that Raquel was, is like running through her past lives actively right oh interesting mm-hmm. or maybe that one because that one she said was in first person whereas the first one was in third person right okay huh. So the third images or scene that Raquel saw was I ran down a dark hallway of tall rose bushes and at the end of the roses was a blinding white light. She do this. Oh, my is coming to me. Come on. Do you want to play his like <laughs> Let me see. Come here. Oh my gosh. Wow. Is oh, girl? Okay. Fourth I was older, like a teenager, like 17 or 18, and I proposed to a girl. I remember she had long hair, a small gold band around her head, and a pink flowy dress, and the proposal was in a courtyard. Oh, so she's seeing like all these phases. Maybe it's all from one life. Oh, that is really interesting. different phases. Yeah, okay, because then this – the okay, then this one's labeled another life. After that, I started getting the locations of England and Malaysia. Malaysia. I remember walking through the street. It was a war-torn village, but all of the buildings were destroyed and rubble was all over the floor. And then in another scene, I remember working at a bakery. I was on a stand outside and a lot of people liked it. That's cool. I still remember how it looked. Once again, a little I was a little boy, but I was like 12 or something with light, short brown hair I was wearing a vest with a striped collar, trousers, knee-high socks, and some shoes. I was also wearing a leather messenger bag type of thing. I had a quick realization. When I was 13, I went through a bit of an identity crisis and was feeling a bit dysphoric for a while. Although it was just because I was insecure about myself and I thought life would be better, but it makes me think, maybe since I was a boy in my two past lives and all of a sudden now I'm a girl, my energy was adjusting to my gender. This is another – this is the picture. I love the visual aid that we're me getting. Me too. And also – It's really Raquel, helping you're... me piece it all together. I wish I could draw like this. This is incredible. And also, also what a good record too for her to have mm-hmm. handy and be like, okay, yeah. now it can I can look back on the experiences and dreams that I had and remember what I looked like and what yes. I was experiencing. I'm also curious because this is really cool. Like it has notes – about what she was seeing on the page with the drawings. So I'm curious if, oh. Raquel, did you do these while you were going through the regression or did you do after? Okay. So then this is, I think, the last story. So this was a random dream, but I woke up with the thought of the devil speaking to me. The background was much more dim and there was fire everywhere. I was right in front of it in a conference sort of style. I don't know how I'd imagined this. I had never had a job before. I have no idea what they said, but I drew this scene later in art class. And yeah, my teacher will never look at me the same. Oh my God. <laughs> a conference with the devil. Oh. I also recently heard my soulmate from my desired reality when listening to an audio. Really cool, but made me super uncomfy. Wait, I need to know what does that mean? I don't know. Is that sort of like alternate timelines where you are trying to like jump to the timeline that has what you're looking for, your ultimate soulmate? Oh, that's so interesting. And you can communicate with them? I know. We we need to look this up. Okay. We need to know what that is. Since writing this email, I've been putting it off for a week. I've recently got a scary experience happen to me. A few nights ago, I saw – something trying to shift realities whoa okay so maybe you're right it was it's like shifting realities Mm. i've never heard of this okay i use the heartbeat method i need to know more putting on heartbeat asmr on youtube under my pillow and then imagining you're laying on someone's chest and i fell asleep with thoughts of sleeping on my best anime boy's chest a good thought right while i woke up with a panic attack i checked my phone under my pillow it was still there and it was 3 36 a.m 
the witching hour just added to my panic attack and I tried to get up from my bed to crawl into my mom's bed, but I collapsed on the floor. I guess the falling of my bones in this large meat suit woke up my mom (laughs) because she ran to my room. My legs just instantly felt like noodles. They felt heavy. My mom picked me up and after a few more minutes of me falling, I was in my mom's bed. I didn't hear it, but apparently I was babbling nonsense. I remember falling into two short second long dreams before feeling nauseous. <gasps> what if this is like you, what you experienced you when like, you're getting yeah, your blood drawn? Falling into them. Ooh. Ooh, Eventually, keep going. Eventually, fell asleep, but the next day I felt really on edge. When I was telling my friend about these stories in art class, immediately after listening to your podcast, the audio started getting all groggy and messed up. I find that since I started this email, I've been getting messed with more and more, and I've been getting in increase in nightmares. Oh, no. And that just – it just ends. I hope you enjoyed my stories. Um, Thank you for reading this astronomically long email and being my best ghoul friend when I'm feeling lonely. Um, And then she has her Instagram, riku.art15 on Instagram if you want to see more of my art. See you on the other side, Raquel. Um, Okay. (laughs) What the hell? (laughs) Yeah. I guess – I mean, I guess there are no answers, right? It's like – we're None. hearing what she's experiencing and she doesn't understand and we don't understand exactly what it all adds up to mean. Right. What the heck? It is really interesting. Like I do – I am going back to the past life regression. I am wondering what the answer is to your question before. Like was she experiencing mm-hmm. different lives or different periods of the same timeline? Yeah. I mean it does seem like because the way Raquel separated the stories, it felt like the first – four scenes were from the same life, like all the way through the proposal. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I don't know. I don't know. There's something about past lives where I'm like, I kind of want to know, especially since she was talking about her hip or her right side of her body in this life. Like, I'm curious if something happened to her in a past life especially that's transcended. Like, what if she was in the war? Because she did see yeah. the woman and the soldier. Like, what if that was, she was seeing herself? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Because maybe there was like an injury sustained during the war. And that's why there was so much attention to that one particular life because there was the the trauma and the pain was supposed to be explained or like there was an attempt to tap in specifically to to what has rolled over to her current life. Uh, What I've decided is, Raquel, you were like so in tune with the other side and have – like the way her mom can read tea leaves, I think Raquel can – Travel between timelines. Right, because she's getting so much out of this. Yeah. Like there's so much being shown. And even just when she was having the dreams where she was like slipping quickly, having yeah. these like two-minute dreams, she she can get there. Like she's in the astral plane. And she's doing something. Yes. She, now she just needs to conquer like, the control of it and being able to give direction to like what she wants to see and where she wants to go. I'm here for this journey. Yeah, me too. Well, I want to astrally hold your hand as you <coughs> continue on it. Yes. This is uh, – I need to find the piece of paper, but I – you know what? Never mind. I'm not going to talk about it. Well, here. There's – I'll Excuse look into me. it more. I'll look into it more. But I do know someone who was telling me about how they – you know in the movie Soul – where basically yeah. like there's the people in the current world that are – they're they're like astral projecting and mm-hmm. helping other souls who are kind of like lost work through yeah. their trauma or their past and move on. Uh-huh. I know someone who does this and she only <gasps> told me on like what was kind of sort of the last time I would see her-ish mm-hmm. in, in like a long time. I'm trying to like not expose who she is, but like give okay. you enough description to be like, it's not someone who, you know, I see often or talk to often, but that I know. And so she wrote down some things for me and I need to find the piece of paper because I was like, I really need to research this and I need to get back to her and I need her to teach me how to do this. But she's also okay. done like insane energy and shadow work and has worked on this for like years and years. And she's so much what? more powerful. But yeah, she's like at this point where she can basically like – she helps people's souls. And it's really interesting because she was saying how she she will help like people who are 
who are alive and living because fragments of people's souls from trauma like uh, chip off. How have I never heard this? I think because I haven't, I, I didn't really Do want I know to, who like, this person is? No, you do not. Oh, oh, oh. Not. okay. But she was saying how she like works with therapists and, and people in the like mental health Stop. field to help go into the astral plane and find pieces that have like of people's souls that have like chipped off from trauma and find them and like heal them and help them come back and like rejoin their main soul. And then that helps, helps the living person basically work through their trauma. It's incredible. That is, there's a name for it though, which is why I'm like, where's the piece of paper? Okay. I, we should do a whole episode about this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll text her and be like, it's, can she come paper. just she wrote take it over our podcast right i know we should have her on we should ask her all yeah the questions. wait that is so fascinating <clears throat> yeah but this kind of reminding me like i feel like raquel can go like this is the direction that she's headed in yeah this is yes this, she'd be fully capable of doing this yes 100 percent. that is so fascinating so fascinating there's a movie in that <laughs> There is? Yeah, I'm going to write I'm going to write it. Oh, wait. I thought you were saying that there was already a movie. No, no, no. Like, this is – this should be a movie. It's going to be a horror be movie, movie and I'm going to write it. All okay. right. Well, I'll write it with you. I'll be your co- – I'll consult with you. All right. I love it. Well, and we'll have our – the actual person who knows all this. Yes. Give be us the all the insights. Yeah. Um, okay. I have – one called ghost experience while listening to your podcast <clears throat> hi ladies my name is Bianni and i live in el paso texas so my ghost experience actually happened while i was listening to your podcast mm. so i go to university of texas in ep utep and while at the student union when i was waiting for a class to start i was listening to your podcast and ended up falling asleep after what i assume was a few minutes i experienced sleep paralysis Oh, no. However, this time was quite a bit different. On a side note, I fell asleep on a carpeted area of the building where people do actually go to hang out between classes, catch up <laughs> on sleep or homework or whatever. I had actually felt like I'm I was just imagining dro- her asleep in the middle of like a, a room and people are like, yeah, um, hello? she's like at like the little like cafe, like yeah. coffee shop. And she just knocked out. I, actually, I don't know who can fall asleep like that. There are some people that are just like fully. I feel like drunk I have when done that on like a plane that. or in the car, and it hurts. Yeah, all the way back like that. That's yeah. That's a skill. I slump it forward. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So in the sleep paralysis, I had actually felt like I was being dragged by my leg on or around the carpet. I could feel the carpet like scraping on my face and a tugging what? on my leg. And this continued on and off for maybe three to six minutes. So after the dragging sensation stopped, still unable to really move, I was able to look around and I saw that there was this ghost girl around the corner just looking at me. She was dressed in a plain white dress that seemed to have been stained with dirt. All of this happened while listening to your podcast. Your podcast was still playing. As I was looking at the ghost girl, I kind of like – tuned in and started listening to what you guys were saying as my mind didn't seem to have been listening before and coincidentally you guys were talking about this little ghost girl and her story (gasps) you seem to describe a ghost girl and i remember there being mention of an old wood house and i can't remember in detail though because dreams get kind of foggy and after this experience i actually woke back up i rewound the podcast to where i left off and where I drifted off. And strangely enough, there was no mention of a ghost girl or child ghost in that particular episode, nor was there mention of the house described. I don't know if my mind made up something while I was in sleep paralysis, but what I do know is that it distinctly sounded like your guys' voice. It really spooked me. It actually happened during an earlier episode. It was episode eight, Hiking Buddies. What do you guys think? I love y'all's podcast. It's actually the only one I've listened to consistently from b Beanie. I wonder this, if, if this is like deja vu of some weird kind or like. This made me think that our podcast, because it's like, what we've learned is clearly it's able to be manipulated very easily by spirits. Yeah. 
I was thinking that maybe this little ghost girl is on the campus. And this was like her way of being able to tell her story was in the sleep paralysis and using our voices using and our voices to like stitch it together into her story so that Bianni would actually hear it and listen to it and re- like receive it. We were the, we were the conduit. We were the, we, we were, were the being conduit channeled. and we didn't even know it. Yeah. Isn't that cool? It is. It's also frightening and the like weird being dragged feeling I don't love for Bianni. Uh, yeah, that's true. And I'm curious if that's old, but I do wonder if that's like the little ghost girl trying to like share her story in a different way. Like she first tried to be like, I was dragged. Right. Or like her in a way. And then it wasn't fully getting through to be any. And it was like, well, now I'm going to tell you my story through the podcast. Oh, oh, that's interesting. It was just like, yeah, like the little girl was just going through the different ways to get her story out. Hmm. Oh my god! The drag thing too uh, would also, like, I guess I'm thinking a couple of things. Like maybe it was a little girl too. I don't know how yeah. aggressively it would she be. Any felt like she was being pulled. But part right. of me thought of like a little kid, like giving like a little tug, mm. like trying to wake you up. Oh, that's basically. Interesting too. Hello, be any. Yeah, but then the other huh. part of me is remembering our friend Nikita's story of when she thought she was just having yeah. a dream. And was like literally Ugh. dragged and woke up with yeah, rug burns horrifying. all down her body. Okay. Um, I should have planned this better, but the um, we're not going to end on a happy note. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> this is from our listener, John, and it is called The Demon That Ruined My Life That Lived in an Old Well. Okay. Hello, ghost girls. My name is John... Little? Oh. My name's Little John Wayne. Ella, well, yes. My name's John Wayne, like the Duke on the old Westerns. <laughs> a st- and sorry for the story being so long. I started listening to you guys about a year ago, and you're amazing and very beautiful, but I have a story for you girls. I was around 14 years old, and my dad just bought an old store that was built on old land. The building was over 100 years old, and now it's 120 some years old. Well, he was looking around and we found what we thought was an old well. It had rocks that was in the ground and was in a circle. And my father and I were thinking it's a real well or maybe it's just rocks that are stuck in the ground. So my dad said, hey, let's see if a real one. And he grabs a long metal rod and went to stab the ground. And I said, no, dad, stop. I want to do it, which was a bad (laughs) idea. So I grabbed the metal rod and stabbed the ground. And as soon as I did, water bugs started coming out of the ground, like hundreds of them. Oh, this is exactly what I pictured. You know the movie The Mummy and how like the scarabs come out of the ground? That is the way it was. Mm. So I jumped back and all of a sudden felt really, really weird. See, I come from a family that hated drugs and alcohol and I said I would never do it. And I mean never. And I shook it off me and went into the house and thought nothing of it. Well, a week went by and I wanted to smoke and drink and wanted to just go and do bad things. And I did. Years went by and I became an addict for over about 20 years. So I look back and I thought about the well. And I think now that the demon or spirit or whatever it was attached itself to me and wouldn't let go. So I went to a green witch in another county that my aunt had told me about. And as soon as I go into her shop, she looks at me and says, you have something at something bad attached to your back and it is a black shadowy figure that will not let go. Ooh. I have seen the figure more than once. I've seen it thousands of times really. So I start to freak out and ask a ton of questions and she goes, come sit down, please calm down because I was going a little wild. So she sits me down and talks to me and tells me to go home, take sage, to burn it and take a broom and sweep my house and sweep it out the door while you break while burning the sage. So I did it, and I'm a religious man, but I believe in the paranormal because, trust me, I know it's real. I asked from I asked for help from God, and I did as the woman had told me, and something happened to me. I felt like a big weight lifted off my shoulder and my back. I had been five and a half years sober, and after the first year of being sober from drinking, I got my life back. Whatever this thing was, 
has had a hold on me for over 20 years and I'm so happy that I was able to get away from it. Thank you girls for the podcast. It has helped me so much just to hear other stories. It makes me realize I'm not the only one that has stuff like this happen to me. Thanks so much. I'll see you on the other side. Thanks from John Wayne from Kentucky. Wow, John Wayne. Oh my God. This is so, I, I mean, the fact that I don't blame John at all for freaking out when when finding out that what he thought he was experiencing and seeing for a long time is very much being experienced by someone else and is true. Yeah, And it's 100%. like here is this like dark demon attached to you. That's yeah. horrifying to hear. And also the fact that like the day he did all of the cleansing and prayers and swept away the darkness, he was able to become sober. Like – one, congratulations. What an amazing feat to be able to overcome an addiction like that. But it just, to me, reassures the fact that like this darkness had such a hold over him because addiction is like not an easy like, oh, let's do this one thing and I'm, you know, I'm clean. And I'm going to kick it. Like, yeah. You so can't, for, most people don't quit cold turkey. It doesn't. No, it's very hard like to. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of incredible that it was like an instant relief of feeling getting rid well, of this and- thing. Yeah. And also, like, I I think if I were in that position and I heard what he heard uh, and I was struggling with the addiction and feeling kind Mm -hmm. of like my life was spiraling and I then learn I have a demon attached to me, I can't – I don't (laughs) know if I would be super optimistic and, like, going through the cleansing. I feel like I would – I'd be like, oh, my God, what else does the universe have to throw at me? Like, I feel so defeated and I feel so down. And it's so amazing that he just was like, I'm going to follow the steps, I'm going to do the thing, and just came out so – re-energized and yeah. with so much your life like, opportunity for life. John, I, I'm John Wayne. I want to know um, what else happened with this conversation with the green witch. Like I imagine she told you a lot and I want to know. Yeah. Tell us. I want and also, what happened to the well? Person, what happened in the well? And also what's the contact for the green witch? I want everyone who's yes. had an experience with with someone who's read them or helped them mm-hmm. to write down the contacts of these people so we can yes. compile like here's a reputable list of all the people yeah who, that's like, such a good idea truly know and help it's right? like psychology today for for um mediums and psychics and green witches right yeah which is like i feel like it needs there needs to be something like that because we're gonna create it would it. Be a really another business idea we are T freaking M. <laughs> T freaking M on this. But T freaking M. But for real, it's hard. Like, you know, there's so many yeah. scammers. There's so many in any profession. But yeah. this is one of the things. Like, we just send us, send us the contacts yeah. of people. Please. Send it all to us. Send us your emails and your stories and everything. We want to hear them all. Email mm-hmm. us at two girls one ghost podcast at gmail.com. Come fall into the triangle. Get lost in it with us. Get lost tell in Tell all triangle. of your friends about our podcast. Yeah. The more you tell, the higher up in the pyramid scheme you will become. Um, yeah. And, and the ghosts and will us. like you for it. Yes, because we are the, the most haunted podcast in America. Um, and another thing that you can do aside from joining the triangle that's actually super, super helpful and you hear it at the end of every podcast is to rate and review. Yeah. That is Please. truly – it helps a lot. Subscribe. Yeah. Tell everybody. Watch us on YouTube. S- subscribe to that. Join our Patreon. Yes. We have new yeah. merch that's coming out. Uh, by the time this comes out, it might be out. I'm not good at math. Yeah, I'm looking at the so. calendar right now. Uh, so that will be super fun. Yeah. So exciting. Live show. Um, live show. Um, ah! all, of, all of the things. We're, lots, of, lots of things happening. We're so excited. Mm-hmm. We can't wait to... I don't know. The live show is going to be so fun. We can't wait. It's, it's going to be, be so great. fun. Um, yeah. So follow along on all the fun journey, spooky things that we're doing. And um, thank you to Aiden Manning and Eric Foster and the entire team at FR Digital for editing both our audio and our YouTube videos. We're just very, very grateful for such a cool team. Yes. Uh, and we're grateful for, for all of you. And if yeah. we don't see you on this side, we will. <gasps> See you, See you on, on the, the other, other side. side. Wait, I really like that as the – that's our and new if ending. We okay, we'll update. Okay. You're going into year five. If we don't see you on this side, we will see we'll you see on you the on other, other side. We'll see you on the other side. Love <laughs> it. Brilliant. Okay, Brilliant. bye. Bye.